if you don't have something to differentiate, then you have to come up with uh, a better strategy. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Contractor Success Academy lesson. Today, I'm excited to bring to you a lesson by Les O'Hara. Les, thanks for being with us, buddy. Hey, honored to be here. Awesome. So Les, first off, I got to tell you, I love your t-shirt. Yeah. Where did you get that? This company that puts these t-shirts together is incredible. <laughs> you should give me a sweatshirt. Nice, nice. So, so for those of you that don't know uh, Les, he is the, the founder and creator of Build 12. Uh, contractor huddle. He's an extremely well-researched individual, brilliant guy, uh, coaches a lot of, of, of um, successful home improvement contractor businesses. Uh, Les, I don't know of anybody who has more books up on their wall than you. I don't know which, which room in your house that is, but that's pretty impressive. And uh, you're also a big fan of football. Yes. i uh, been playing football my whole life since seven years old and uh, have four boys and been coaching them since they've been seven years old and uh, currently coach at our high school wide receivers and I just love the sport and I love the amount of metaphors there are for business people in, in the realm of coaching. Absolutely. So, so coaching is definitely in your DNA. So I'm glad we were able to get you on the academy here. Um, you know, today, Les, we're going to be talking strategy, right? Yeah. And strategy is, again, that, that metaphor for sports. You, you go into a game with a strategy and, you know, you're going to quickly determine if that strategy is working or not. And what are you going to do if it's not? And that's what I hope to expound on a little bit today for all the contractors in the academy. Awesome. Good stuff. So uh, let's, let's get right into it. We'll screen share and uh, see what you got. Love it. Thank you. So let's keep this theme going. This is my strategy playbook. And you know, as you run a contracting business, you're going to have different strategies. You're going to have a hiring strategy. You're going to have the production strategy, your marketing strategy. This one, we're going to talk about overall strategy, but we're really going to hone in on your marketing strategy and um, how we can take advantage of that. All right. Well, here's what we're going to cover today in today's practice how I discovered this system of using strategy, why I discovered it, how it's going to uh, have an impact on your contracting business starting tomorrow. My tested marketing play, we're gonna walk through that uh, as a coach would do it on a, on a chalkboard. I'm gonna show you what that means for your next marketing investment. We're gonna talk about watching game film, why that's so important in, uh, sports, but also in your contracting business. Let's throw in a trick play because who doesn't love trick plays? And then I have a few gifts for you guys. So a little background of myself. That's the family roofing business up there on the top. We, uh, when I came on board, uh, my father had grown a, a small roofing business in the city of Chicago, had gotten it to about 600,000 in sales. And uh, I came aboard and this thing took off kind of like a rocket ship. And we grew to 6 million in within five years. And I don't say that to brag, I say that humbly because we made every mistake in the book. Many uh, that you know, Mark, a lot of them were marketing mistakes, but uh, we learned so much in this short period of time that we were able to parlay this roofing business to several other type of contracting businesses. So not only is this the family business that is still going strong 30 years later, but it has produced an insulation company, a masonry company. It has uh, an air duct cleaning business that was uh, started through a national franchise. We've started so many other of our employees into their own ventures and business. And so I show that to just show the other contractors in your academy that I've been where they're at. Uh, I've been doing this now close to 30 years. And I know what it's like to sit there in the, in the corner office when you have to make payroll 
and you have to make major decisions and really you feel like you're a little bit on an island. My second half of my career, because I know you think I'm a young buck, Mark, but I'm 51 (laughs) and I'm feeling uh, all those years of playing football, I'm definitely feeling it on my body. But my second half, my halftime of my life is through coaching, through nurturing athletes, elite athletes, coaching them and other contractors and uh, that I was mentoring, I felt like I had a strength of mentoring and coaching contractors. So uh, for the last three years, I've been building an incredible business with contractors all across the country, from New York, New York, to rural Iowa, to California, uh, Florida, Texas, And I love working with them and helping them devise strategy, uh, come up with the building blocks, the the blocking and tackling of contracting, making sure they do that and uh, helping them grow their businesses. Nice. I love the I love the sports analogies, Les. Yeah, well, it comes naturally to me and it really comes natural to contractors because, you know, the vast majority of love them. And they have been athletes some somewhere in their life. And we know that all great sports programs, teams, dynasties, all use these same principles, these same strategies that we should be using to run our contracting company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As I mentioned to you, uh, you earlier, I'm a dad of four boys. Uh, me and Julie, who I met, she was a gymnast uh, in Minnesota where we both went to college. And... Uh, We've been married 28 years and just, you know, I'm, I'm truly a very, very blessed person. I'm doing what I love. I have kids and a wife that love me and I have, uh, you know, great, great friends and associates. So you mentioned my books. So what I usually do in a lot of my trainings is I want my contractors that I'm mentoring also read what I'm reading because I am the sum of the great mentors, the great books, the great uh, strategists that I've come across. And where you can really get great strategy, great learning is through books. And so this uh, lesson that we're doing on strategy, these are the three of my favorite books that will give you uh, some great insights on how you can use these books to take your contracting business to another level. Have you read any of these, Mark? I've got all three on my shelf and I have read them. I have read them. Yeah. Sweet. Well, I know 80, 20 sales and marketing from all of my clients that you work with. Um, you, you got that dialed in, but that is such a great book for contractors to read and to, to learn about the 80, 20 rule. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And any of those other books, uh, anything stand out for you on those? Yeah. I mean, I blue ocean strategy. I like Jim Collins. Good to great. That one took me a bit of time to kind of get into and flipped and flopped between uh, audible and, and, and Kindle. I mean, look, they're all, they're all good. Uh, built to last also. Um, good. yeah, there's a ton of books, not enough time in a day. <laughs> so true. Blue ocean strategy for those contractors saying, would this, uh, make sense for me? It really does because, uh, we, as contractors are in, um, what's the word I'm trying to think, uh, say here is that we're, we're not differentiated. Everyone is putting on a roof. Everyone is putting, uh, you know, doing tuck pointing or brick work. So Mm -hmm. if you don't have something to differentiate, then you have to come up with uh, a better strategy and just an incredible book. Strongly recommend it. So, I like positioning this whole thing with quotes, and this one really hits home for me, and I'll tell you why after I read it, but Max McCowan, uh, a management expert, says strategy is not really a solo sport, even if you're the CEO. And why I like this is because for the first half of my career as the owner of a contracting business, I was trying to figure out everything on my own. It was maybe part ego. Maybe it was part um, insecurity of wanting to look the part or needing to figure this all out on myself. But truly, when I got wise in my later part of my life is I started bringing in more people that were experts in their uh, 
field of expertise so that they can build into my business and my uh, understandings, my marketing, my, my business management, their wisdom. And so you don't, as a contractor, have to figure this all out on your own. Almost every realm that we're talking about, there is someone that can help you with each individual strategy. Yeah, I, I, I particularly like this quote less. I think it's, it's so true. I've been victim of that myself. You feel as the, the president, the owner, the CEO of a company, you, you're the one to have all the answers. And I, I don't know why we do that, um, but, but ultimately, you know, we should be um, looking to hire the right talent that we can bring internally and trust that when we have issues or we need to talk strategy that we can rely on them to, to basically come up with, with the right ideas or, or the right strategies, right? So yes. I think sometimes it's, um, it's, it's fear or not having enough trust or confidence in our own abilities to believe that we've made the right choice in hiring the right people and then just letting go a little bit, trusting that, hey, we are the ones who brought these people on. We brought them on for a reason. Um, it's likely because we believe in their ability to do what we've put them there to do. Let's let them do it. <laughs> yes. You know, maybe it's the uh, the micromanagement in us that wants to kind of take over and do all the decision making and stuff. But this is key. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Let's talk about this play. We're gonna we're gonna get up on the chalkboard and kind of walk you through it. We're gonna take this and kind of walk it through on the marketing side of your business because I feel like if you don't get your marketing dialed in, you pretty much don't have a business. We need leads, we need sales, and uh, this will help you knock a bunch of these out at the same time. So this is what I would say I've distilled in the close to 30 years of running these different types of contracting businesses and always having to dial in uh, lead generation and, and closing sales and uh, just growing the businesses. And once you get this formula down, once you get this honed in, you pretty much can grow any type of contracting business and do it really successfully. This has been my formula that I've used now for over six different companies each time having the success of growing them over a million dollars in revenue. If, if I didn't see what was at the bottom there, Les, this would be a little scary to me. Yeah. It's like some yeah. algebra and I'm like, man, I'm going back to school here. <laughs> this is I know, cool. I know. I was worried that, you know, us as contractors, we don't want to see formulas like this. We, we thought we were never going to see that again after school. But I'm hoping that it will all make sense when we put it all together. Okay. So, what we're going to just talk about real quick is, you know, picking a channel of your marketing, the money that you're going to bring to it, plus your branding. That is what I call the whole. That's the main piece that almost anyone can do. But then the next couple of X factors that don't get done quite often is the frequency of that marketing, that, 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 total hole there of the channel money branding. But then the true X factor on top of the frequency is what we have been talking about, Mark and I, of strategy is going to be the X factor in giving you incredible results once you uh, humble yourself and take that on. So let's break them all on here. So the channel, when we talk about the channel, that is where you're spending your time, your resources, your money to generate leads for the business. Now, some have a great network of people. That's the CRM down there in the bottom. They can just call up uh, some of their network and they're getting work from them. People know them, et cetera, et cetera. You know, email, uh, I was just working with one of my clients today on his email newsletter that is almost a blocking and tackling that does not get done by the vast majority of contractors to just send out an update of some offers and keeping in touch. That's a channel, your email marketing. Paid search, you know uh, better than anyone and you're my strategist, Mark, when it comes to paid search. There is no uh, better way of being found than having uh, that channel dialed in and, and running uh, excellent. Organic search, 
that that's another word for SEO. Are people finding you um, or, organically? So you guys could see how many channels there are. We can keep going. It's you got social media and you have uh, uh, yellow pages and uh, Craigslist. There is the the channels could almost run endless, but you have to dial in your channel of where you're going to hit home runs and where you're going to get the best results for your marketing dollars. So this is channel. We take the channel and now we have to put some money into that channel. Yes, some channels are free, but most of them are not. And when they, most of these channels, you need to show me the money. I love when I am able to dial in to the contractors that I coach. And it always comes down to show me the money that we're putting into each of these channels. And what you will see is that if you're spreading out your money over a lot of channels, you're not uh, focused and you're not going to get is the, the kind of results that you want. So whatever channel that we choose, one, two, three, four main channels, we need to put money. Well, how much money? I get asked this a lot. This is going to shock a lot of contractors. And I don't know, Mark, what do you think? Do you, do you feel, do people ask you that question? Do you have uh, an answer to how much money, uh, you know, what percentage of my sales should I be putting into marketing? Yeah. Um, good question, Les. I, I can speak to this point for, for quite a while. Ultimately, what I see too far often happen is people, they'll come up with a, with a percentage of what they think is fair to put towards marketing, but they'll look at their last year's revenues and they'll base that percentage on what they did and they won't base it on future projected anticipated growth. I think that's a mistake. And then another one that we see is when people brag about the fact that their cost to, to, to sale is, is, is so low. It's, hey, we're spending only 2% to do you know, 1 million in revenue. Well, okay, you're spending twenty thousand dollars, but then they'll say, "Yeah, oh, but eighty percent of our revenue is word of mouth and referrals, and we don't need to spend a lot on marketing." But technically, with those numbers, they're spending ten percent to go make two hundred thousand dollars. So they're really not spending enough money at 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 the end of the day. So I mean, I would agree with this. I think any company you look at the the ten million dollar plus companies, the fifty million, hundred million dollar companies, they're spending money and they're in yes. growth mode, and that can be. We've seen fifteen percent. You know, um, anything less, I, I I would agree. It's it's um, again, I'm biased. I'm a marketer, but I'm looking at all the different channels, right? I mean, and and we see people doing the the traditional stuff that helps you know lift brand, and they're bringing you know uh, money towards digital. I mean, yeah, you, you have to spend money. You need visibility. You need leads. Well, this this is like you and I talked about. This is a bare minimum, but this is a great barometer of your business that if you're not in this realm of this neighborhood of 10%, it's an indicator that your business isn't healthy in, in a number of ways. One is like you just mentioned, if it's very low, then you are totally on referrals and word of word of mouth, but that doesn't give you any fuel to grow the business. And the, the purpose of growth is to give you the fulfillment and you know, what, why are you doing in this business? That's a whole nother, probably academy uh, session you're going to be doing. But if you're not growing, you're really not building a business that could take care of you. Uh, if you didn't work, if it can run without you day to day, you know, in, into the thick of things. So I use this 10% usually as a barometer of how healthy is their business. Because the other thing that it could show is that the contractor isn't charging enough for his services to even be able to afford the 10%. So if you're a contractor doing 500,000 in sales, but your gross margin, your gross profit on the job is only 20%, well, by the time you pay yourself and insurance and all the rest of it, you don't have any money to put into marketing to grow. So you're going to stall out. You're going to plateau your business. You're never going to get this thing to the level that people will run the business for you. And it's not you needing to be the main driver of the business. Yeah. And I, I think less the, the, you know, I'm seeing this kind of vicious circle in my mind and we see it far too often. You're talking about profitability. Exactly. If you're not, if you're not charging enough and you're not 
you know, generating a profit on the work you're doing and you're just, you know, changing hours for dollars, trading hours for dollars, it's tough to scale a business. And now you're at the mercy because you don't have a, a, a an acquisition model that is predictable that you can literally, you know, rely on to bring you uh, sufficient leads such that you can choose where you should be spending your time. You're at the mercy of whatever comes your way. You're saying yes to things you shouldn't be yes. saying yes to. Now you're shooting yourself in the foot because you're taking on jobs where you won't be able to make that profit. And because you're not making that profit, you can't go and spend on the right type of marketing. Now you're not getting enough leads and then you're stuck to taking the scraps or whatever you can get, you know? So true. That is such the vicious cycle that um, exactly what a lot of contractors that can't get to that next level for themselves are finding themselves out that they're just not charging enough. Yeah. Then I think it, it's, you know, it's the chicken or the egg question, right? Well, if you don't have the money, how do you put the money into marketing? So that's a whole other, <laughs> that's a whole other story, but I'm sure you can speak to that. Yeah. Well, that, that tells me that the business model is off and we, we need to make some changes right away. Mm -hmm. But what, just to end this subject on a, on a high note, when you do have your sales and marketing dialed in and you're spending 10%, you are going to have such an overflow of leads that you now are controlling the shots with the customers. You are getting the best jobs and you're picking and choosing. And that's where the, pro the, the higher profitability jobs are when you have so many leads that you can pick and choose. Mm -hmm. Okay. So channel plus the money. We just talked about it. Pick some channels, put significant money. Now comes the branding. This is one of the things that I think is my secret sauce that has been successful for me in growing and scaling six separate uh, contracting type of businesses. The first thing that I've always done is dial in the branding. So I like to teach my contractors to pass the eye test. So in football, you know, I've had some sons try and get recruited and uh, really passing the eye test is, do they look like a football player? Are they, is the height, the weight, you know, their build truly is how a lot of people get recruited to NFL, to the next level in college football is this eye test. So what I try to teach my contractors is the same things happening with you and your exposure into the marketplace. And if you're not passing the eye test to the potential buyer, the buyer that's going to pay top dollar, good margin jobs, then you are going to get passed and gone on to the next contractor. Now, of course, you're, there's going to be the clientele that they want the cheapest job. And frankly, your branding doesn't really have that much of a factor to them. But we don't want to go after customers that are looking for the lowest price job. And if you're in that, that's why you need to read Blue Ocean Strategy. <laughs> we're, we're talking about going after the best customers and the branding really has to be dialed in. Don't you agree, Mark? Yeah, I, I mean, I would agree. We're, we're not a branding firm, but I totally see value in that. Anytime you can differentiate, you know, stand out. Um, like you said early on in the presentation, Les, if you're slinging shingles and you're up against 10 other companies and you're not really competing on anything other than price, what do you really have? So this is a, an opportunity to stand out. Now, let's put this into context for people. Branding, more specifically, what should people be kind of paying attention to if we're, if we're talking branding? Well, it starts with the logo, uh, number one. But beyond that, it's now some messaging. It's it's the company story. Is there is there a, a unique selling proposition? What's different about you? So many contractors that I, I meet and greet, they all have the same language. We do quality work. Our work is warrantied. Um, we show up on time. I mean, these are non-starters anymore. It really has to be a compelling vision. There has to be a story that's tied to the customer that they feel like, this is this is this is the company they they get me they they understand what I'm trying to get at, and to tie that in onto everything uh, that you do as a company is the challenge. 
It's your business cards to your trucks, to your proposals, to the attachments to the proposals, to your website. It's everything has to be uniform. Everything has to be uh, speaking the same story, the same language to every customer. Yeah. And it just, you know, there's another book called Made Made to Stick. And I think branding is so important. We've had um, the the uh, CEO founder of, of Sumo Quotes in the Academy talk about proposals and how to tailor proposals to the actual homeowner and not make them about you. We have tendency to want to talk about us, us, us. So true. just in something like a proposal, a well-branded proposal, but more about the customer where they see their own homes, that stickiness is so much more memorable than other quotes that you get on, you know, simple paper or line item kind of uh, checklist type thing. So yeah, branding is, uh, is super important. It's really, when I, when I hearken back to secret sauce, it's exactly what I've done with all of these companies is I've really dialed in the branding so that a customer, when they see us, we pass the eye test and it could be any representative, as long as they're clean cut and they're sincere, they could sell the company's, uh, messaging that you want to convey. I can't overemphasize how important branding is. I also want to give you a kudos. You know, we design websites and our clients that uh, use you for pay-per-click, the stinking landing pages you build them are so well designed, so well branded. You're making me look bad because they look like a million bucks. (laughs) I appreciate that, Les, but I cannot take credit because I am not technical. Uh, we'll give the credit to to our designers here, and, and yeah, uh, they'll definitely they're awesome. appreciate that. Yeah. They're awesome. So you get branding. I know that. Yeah. So that's that's anyone could do that. They pick a channel, they bring to the table their branding, or they enhance their branding, and they bring money. So what can enhance this strategy? What can give you these uh, you know better results? So. REM is one of my favorite brands. It's probably going to date me, uh, you know, that I am over 50 years old. But uh, this is one of their best songs. Uh, What's the Frequency, Kenneth? And I just love this song. But when I was thinking about teaching the contractors about frequency, this is one of the missing elements in all of the marketing that I see that fails is that a contractor will say, I'm going to go try pay-per-click. And he goes in there and he, he gets a Google AdWords account and he, he signs up and he does it for a month, doesn't get any leads and uh, maybe a second month and then quits. I, I've done this before with myself where I didn't get the results where massive postcard and we just designed really nice postcards, but we put all the money to do it at one time and we never send it out again a two, three, four every month. And what I've learned is when you just scattershot your marketing without any true frequency, you are destined to fail in whatever marketing campaign that you're going to go after. I, I don't know uh, if you're, you've proven that as well with Web Runner or not, but uh, it's just proven time and time again for me. Yeah. And I think we can take a page out of the, the traditional advertising book here think of TV, think of radio, think of billboards. These, this, the, these channels are effective in large part because of frequency, right? So rarely will someone do a media buy, take billboards, for example, you're a large brand, you're looking to do something national, you're going to buy billboards everywhere, right? Yeah. And you're not going to leave them there for a day and say, hey, let's put up a billboard for, for a day. No, you'll do it for a period of time. Same thing with radio, same thing with TV. Frequency is a key metric. Uh, people need to be exposed to your stuff over and over and over and over. Um, and, you know, the nice thing about digital today is that not only can you show less, um, not, not only can you expose your advertising material to consumers, but you can also determine from data who's actually engaging with that, right? So imagine if you could show a billboard to somebody or send a flyer or place an ad on the radio or TV and then identify very quickly who actually saw the billboard, listened to the to the ad, watched the whole commercial on TV. You get that kind of level data on the digital side, which is nice because when you reallocate marketing dollars, you can re-engage people who you know are actually showing an interest in what you do. So you're actually taking your marketing dollars a lot further. And that's that's what I love. But I mean frequency is absolutely um, yeah, frequency is important. 
And the lesson for the contractor is that the money that you put into a channel, most likely you're going to have to decide if, you know, you, you make your marketing budget. And if you have X dollars, then you have to decide how do I take those X dollars and I multiply them or divide them by the frequency of when I'm going to send out, uh, you know, whatever that channel is. Mm -hmm. So if you're going, if you have $5,000 um, to put into uh, Facebook ads, you're not going to put that all into let's, let's do it in one month or two months, but you're going to take that 5,000 and say, let's do $500 a month and do it over a 12, 12 month period. Right. So that is what I found to be a, a killer enhancement to your marketing is that when you do come up with the channels, the money that you're going to decide and the branding, then you have to decide, can I pull it off? Am I going to stick with it? Am I going to run this um, for a certain period of time based on that channels, you know, desired, you know, recommended uh, frequency. So I just really learned that and I, I want to stress it. But the last X factor that to just bring everything back together from where we started was I was doing this on my own uh, for whatever channel you can come up with. But it was based on what I could try to figure out the strategy, the overall strategy should be. Now, their strategy for each channel, you know, you know better than this, that each channel needs a strategist, but over and above that, you need an overarching strategy that brings in a strategic partner. So a lot of my clients, I play that role for them because they have so much on their plate. They're looking at each individual channel, but we need to step back and look at the whole a picture and see how this marketing dollars, these channels, these frequencies play into your entire business. And when you go in blind without a strategic partner, not only in each channel, but maybe an overarching strategic partner to give you advice, to hold you accountable to budgets, to uh, results, then you're really missing out on the true X factor of all of your marketing efforts. Bottom line is that when you add your marketing dollars plus your channels, plus your branding and your frequency, if you, you get that dialed in, but you don't have someone that can help you design the overall stra strategy because they're looking at your entire business. What are your goals? What, how much do you want to take home per year? What do you want this business to do for you? You need someone that is going to hold you accountable, to be your assistant coach, to, you know, just keep an eye on things and help, uh, help you make the right decisions for the business. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's key, Les. There's, um, you know, you see this in the marketing world a lot. People chase tactics. They're looking for that silver bullet. And yep. there's no there's no strategy in mind, right? How does this fit into the overall picture? We want rankings, or we want first positions, or we want more. We you know we want to be first on 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 Google. Um, so we hire an SEO company, and then okay, well let's go and rank for all these these keywords, and then we start getting you know rankings, but we're not actually getting more traffic because we're not on the first page, and we don't we haven't optimized for the right keywords, and it, it can it can get messy fast. So. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, and good strategy partners, they're out there. Now, sometimes you have to pay them. Like I love paying you because uh, you are such a strategic partner in the world of paid search that, you know, I've searched and searched and searched and never found someone that knew how to bring strategy and return on investment. Any channel that you want to pick, there is going to be a strategic partner for you over and above that. It's nice to have someone else that you could bounce your overall marketing strategy on and that can help tie everything together for you. Yeah, I like that. I think when we look at your equation, um, all those different elements, there's, there's really a strategy to them, right? So if somebody comes with a budget, is that adequate for my market based on you know, the potential reach? 
the, the, the frequency, if we go back to even your other slide where you talk about, you know, acquisition, you know, branding, engagement, you know, all different purposes, right? So your content, how you're, you know, if you're, if you're blogging or you're doing things on social media, how does that fit into the overall picture? Where are you, um, where does that content fit? You know, what's gonna, what's gonna impact your consumers based on where they're at in their, on their path to purchase, you know? So it's, it's, um, it can get confusing, obviously. Oh, man. so confusing. I think like you say, the idea of having key partners to work with you and, and obviously to hold them accountable, you know, you hold them accountable, they hold you accountable. you got the right KPIs in place. We talk on a, a couple other lessons about the importance of KPIs and just having them. So you know what to measure, what to track. And then that makes your decision-making process and this whole thing a lot easier because now it becomes clear if you are seeing um, success in a particular channel and you know that you're more profitable, they're allocating funds to it becomes easier. And then you can justify investing more on the branding side or whatever. And, you know, we're talking sports analogies here, less maybe not football related, but more related to golf. I refer a lot to the long and the short game. And I like your slide where you talk acquisition, branding, engagement, uh, we refer to that as the short and the long game, right? So the acquisition stuff like pay-per-click that you refer to either on Google or on Facebook, that's great for those initial um, those initial leads, people who are searching at least. And then even Facebook as, as a different channel, social channel, is a little bit better on the branding side and it's more of a long play. So uh, it's interesting, interesting that you kind of broke that up that way. Thanks. Thanks for the segue yeah. because... Um... I have that coming up uh, right after this. Uh, thanks for the golf analogy too. There you go. So we're we're all fans of Tesla. If you've never driven in a Tesla, you have to. It's an incredible experience. Um, so Elon Musk said this, and think of this as you know your business. You know, not just a sports team, but talent is extremely important. It's like a sports team. The team that has the best individual player will often win. But then there's a multiplier from how those players work together and the strategy they employ. So if you could put your businessman's hat on, what Mark was just saying is that the metaphor, the true metaphor is these other channels, these other people that are well-versed in Facebook, uh, email marketing, SEO, your website, those are your individual players that are out there. And yes, you can have a great individual player. You can have a great, uh, let's call it uh, web runner is a great individual player for pay-per-click, but then the multiplier is the strategy of putting it all together with your website, with your SEO, how that plays together with your uh, reviews and your um, uh, email newsletter. All of that strategy is, is, is such a true multiplier. That's why I wanted to end kind of on that quote, where, where you're going with this, I'm right, I'm tracking with you perfectly. This is the high school team that I that I coach. And what our head coach uh, is great at is halftime adjustments. So what we do, what you were saying is KPIs. So what we do is we come in at halftime and we're looking at our KPIs at halftime. What are we averaging? Uh, what, what's our past completions? What's our run versus pass? What's our third down conversions? And then we are making adjustments so that we can go back out in the second half and continue to dominate or, you know, come back and win the game. What does that look like for you as a contractor? What I see so many contractors fail is they don't make any adjustments. They're expecting the, the, the players out there to do it on their own. And then when they finally come back and check on things and it's not to their liking, then they're just going to walk off the field and say, I quit. I'm not going to do this anymore. That's not what you do. What you have to do is you got to make your adjustments based on these KPIs that your strategic partners are going to get back to you. So I love your analogy, the long game and short game, because I love golf. I just have a passion for it. And what I learned early on, the biggest thing that helped me become a better golfer was the first time that I went and got a lesson and the instructor showed me my swing on video. And then I've learned now that as I coach quarterbacks and I also coach wide receivers, 
the film doesn't lie. And you're going to get such great feedback the minute that you see your results and how you're doing things. So what does that mean to a contractor? What's the metaphor? Well, for me, every one of my marketing clients, we build a dashboard for them so that we're seeing real time and month over month, how is our social media followers interacting? Are we getting more likes? Are we getting more reach? What is, um, what is the, the Google uh, keyword growth and rankings for the specific words that we know that we want to um, get found for? So we build these dashboards so that the contractor, his strategy, we're going to get real-time results and accountability to the money that we're putting in. So we're going to track the ROI and we're going to track uh, the positives and negatives and make those halftime adjustments. I know you could speak a lot on this because quite frankly, I'm so envious of your dashboard that you do. Uh, you made me up my game, but uh, you know, speak a little bit on the dashboard part of things. And yeah. I, I, I think less the, the, the analogy here again is great. Um, you're talking about doing halftime adjustments. So that's, you know, midway through a game, what happened, you know, uh, first half, what do we need to change? And then after the game, video replay, right? The next day, everyone's going to watch. Okay, here's what we did right. Here's what we did wrong. Here's what we need to do next game. And then they're practicing that in practice, 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 practice. Whereas in the contracting world, home improvement, what we see a lot of are people making halftime adjustments or watching game replays at the end of the year yes. or halfway through the year. And that's so, not really yeah. the time to do it. It needs to be a lot more frequent, right? So more of these, more of these uh, micro uh, micro changes, right? Micro gains we talk about. So it's a matter of, you know, m taking the time and I don't know if it's weekly or monthly, but on every mm -hmm. element of our business, and I'm going off track here, not so much marketing, but the financials, your staff, I mean, all the different moving parts to the business need to be approached very much in the way that you're approaching just marketing with this kind of, um, you know, equation here. So I love that. Uh, in terms of dashboards, I mean, yeah, uh, relative to our pay per click, I think the biggest takeaway for us here is we've seen so many people come to us and say, "Hey, what do you think of these reports?" And what we're currently getting, we're not really pleased. What can you guys do better? So we'll look at reports and we see that all the things that are being tracked are not necessarily very meaningful to a business owner. And as business owners, what we want to see is is the money that we're putting into this generating a return and knowing how many clicks and impressions and click through rates and all that kind of stuff. Knowing all that is not necessarily going to impact you as much as knowing, hey, here's what we spent. Here's how many leads that translated to. Here's how many new customers that translated to. That's the kind of focus that we try to tie into our dashboard. But of course, there are other channels where you can't be that, um, uh, how should I say, that, that accurate. Branding is a tough thing to measure. Attribution becomes very difficult. Uh, nonetheless, I mean, the key takeaway here is, is uh, you know, uh, measure so that you can improve and pay attention to those to those metrics i think agreed and what also the dashboard does for you it also gives you another gauge to dissect and manage your business because anything that is not reporting well or is showing red you're able to dig into your business and say maybe it's our closing percentage maybe it's the training of our sales guys Maybe it's the marketing literature. Maybe it's the pricing. You know, there's so many more clues that help you as the business owner, the more sophisticated your dashboard becomes over time. And then the 80-20 trick play. So when you read that book, 80-20 Sales and Marketing, you know, my trick play is always trying to figure out how to get 80% of the results from 20% of my efforts. And how do you do that? Well, for me, it's when you can combine one or two or three channels or tactics that are going to exponentially give you this greater return for a, a simple investment of time, money, or your energy. So this is proven in the 30 years. As I go back and I look almost every year, I'll look at the customer sales and I'll do an 80-20 and it. It, you know, it is incredible how many times 
you know, 80% of your gross profit is really from 20% of the projects or customers that you do. So once you get this dialed in, now you can figure out how did I get that customer? And then uh, how can I design this next play where I'm going to keep going after this simple channel or method or tactic to get me 80% of my results? And this has been a game changer year after year after year. Yeah, I, I, I think that's huge, Les. And also the fact that, you know, we're talking about the, uh, the Blue Ocean strategy before. This is kind of a nice segue. You're talking about 80-20, 20% 20 effort yielding 80% of the results. From a marketing standpoint, people have tendency to, and I don't know if it's because they hear it thrown around everywhere, that you need to be omnipresent and you need to be everywhere. So that graph where you're showing, uh, the, the slide rather, where you're showing all the different channels and the possible things you could be investing in, when you're sure. small and you're just getting started out, that could be the death of you if, like you said, you spread yourself too thin and you sprinkle a bit of money everywhere, not really having a strategy that's going to yield negligible results. You're not going to get anywhere. You're going to dig a hole for yourself. But if you can exploit a couple key channels and really dominate those, that's when you can you can kind of grow, right? You can say, okay, we're, we're dominating this. Uh, let's just go to town on that, get results. Great. We're winning. Let's expand. Let's start emphasizing a lot more on branding now, right? Now that we've got those quick wins, we've, we've, we've dialed in, like, like you said, the average order value closing, you know, upsell referrals, word of mouth. Great. Fantastic. Now we want to become known locally. So we're going to double down on, on branding. And so whole different set of KPIs and stuff, but, um, yeah, I love that analogy. It's almost a circle, you know, dial in that one channel, Put some good money and branding and frequency, great strategy, get that dialed in, get some sales, pick that next channel, do the same thing. Now you got two channels working for you, three channels, four channels, and um, that's when you really start growing like crazy. Yeah, yeah. So beginning, maybe you want to be a, a big fish in a small pond, and then after that, you can pick another pond to go and own. Yeah, one of, one of my contractors grew... And all of his uh, channel, his main channel was Thumbtack. Nice. Thumbtack, Thumbtack, Thumbtack. But now the weakness is, as soon as Thumbtack changes their game, now you're uh, vulnerable. And that's exactly what happened. They changed their system. And so now he was left scrambling. So the faster you can uh, diversify your channels, the better. So, um, again, it's been so nice that you... Uh, afforded me this invitation to talk to, to your contractors. I've been a big fan of the Academy. I'm a super big fan of web runner and all the success uh, that you have given, not only me and my companies, but all of the guys uh, that I coach. Thank you for that. My gift. Uh, I'd love to talk uh, to any of your contractors that are on the Academy. If they want a strategy session, you know, I'm going to, uh, Right at that link, there's a place to book some time. It's kind of limited slots now because we're going into football season. Well, this is recorded, so who knows when it is. But um, for 2019, uh, the balance here, it might be a little bit spotty. But if you can get a session with me, let's spend an hour on the phone. Tell me about your business. Let me give you some uh, strategic uh, pieces that you might be able to walk away with. If if you're already a little bit down that road. You want some strategy with your peers. That was one area that I wanted to talk about, Mark, was there's a lot of great strategy on forums and different channels. You know that we have one of ours built with all of our contractors in our Slack channel. But mm -hmm. I have also have a private Facebook group with over 800 contractors, all submitting questions, giving advice. Uh, Mark, you're on there giving strategy. I am many other um, strategic partners. Jump into that. There's a link for you there. And then tying all your digital marketing in together, that 80-20 rule, I have a way that you could, uh, with one quick play, knock out a lot of these channels all at once um, through my little trick play. It comes in this checklist, and that's another free gift uh, for anyone in the academy. Awesome, Les. So I think there were a lot of good takeaways here today for any sports fans or football <laughs> fanatics on the session. I know everyone's going to appreciate the analogies. Les, you're an awesome guy. You're doing a lot of good things for the industry and uh, just with, with your own businesses as well. So keep it up, my friend. And uh, thanks for the lesson today. Thanks a lot for having me.